Shortly before midnight on April 3rd, 2000, Michigan State cut down the nets in Indianapolis, capping the school's second NCAA championship. The journey that ended with an 89-76 victory over Florida in the national championship game began almost one year earlier at the 1999 Final Four. Coming off a 68-62 loss to Duke in the national semifinal, the Spartans made a commitment to themselves and to each other that things would be even better during the 1999-2000 season. The Spartans' commitment became evident when All-America guard Mateen Cleaves announced his decision to remain at Michigan State for his senior season. As tempting as an NBA career appeared, Cleaves had some unfinished business in college. You know, after we had the last game, kind of left the empty feeling in my stomach. You know, um, we got close to the championship. You know, next year I want to bring it home. Um, I think just I'm in love. Now, I don't think, I know I'm in love with the players on the team. It's like, like they're players. We're like brothers. And I enjoy being around them, and I'm not ready to leave them right now. He has an unbelievable relationship with his teammates. And that's why we are who we are, um, because of what he has and what he, what he gives them. Uh, I told him that the, the minute he decides the next five months, I wouldn't want to be his teammate because now he's, he's got some things that he wants to accomplish. Along with Cleves, the Spartans return starters Charlie Bell and Andre Hudson from the Final Four squad along with key reserves A.J. Granger and Morris Peterson, a 1999 first team all Big Ten honoree. With so much returning experience, Michigan State was a popular choice to make a return trip to the Final Four and take a shot at a national championship. Everywhere fans looked, the Spartans were on the cover of preseason magazine. When the first polls of the season were released, the Spartans stood in the top three. We want to get better every day. We want to win all our home games. Those are basics. We want to win championships. And what do I mean by championships? I mean every one we play in. We want to win whatever championship we have the ability to win, which would mean in Puerto Rico, which would mean in our own Coca-Cola, which would mean in the Big Ten and the Big Ten tournament. And yes, it would mean in the national championship. I mean, that's what we'd like to do. And that's what our goals are going to be. And. Uh, only time will tell whether we can accomplish it. The season kicked off at midnight on October 16 with the midnight premiere. Spartan fans jammed the Breslin Center to catch their first glimpse of the green and white as the team was introduced in tuxedos before thrilling the crowd with an up-tempo scrimmage. Everything seemed to be off to a smooth start. But that would all change on October 25. The team Cleves has a stress fracture and he could be out anywhere from uh, eight to 10 weeks. People have asked me a million times about our program and where it is, I think we're gonna find out where it is. Do we have a program or do we just have a team? I think I was playing the best basketball I have played since I've been here. And um, then, you know, I think I had a good summer workout. And um, then you get the injury and then the first thing you say is why me, you know, why? All I wanna do is play basketball, go to school, get a degree, you know, why, why, why I keep getting hurt? Everybody's gonna have to step up. You know, I'm gonna have to. Coach talked about me having to score more. Talking about David having to run the team. Talking about AJ have to, you know, show show and provide more leadership for the team. I think everybody's gonna have to step their game up and not you two, and, um, and hopefully try to get past this. With Michigan State's leader now on crutches, many pundits quickly changed their preseason predictions. Basketball expert Dick Vitale dropped MSU from number one all the way down to number 17. Mateen's injury, however, was not the first or the last piece of adversity that the Spartans would face during the season. When fall practice opened, the team was unsure whether they would have the services of talented freshman Jason Richardson, who was originally tabbed as a partial qualifier. One day before the team's first exhibition game, the NCAA granted Richardson full qualifier status. Richardson responded by scoring 25 points against the California All-Stars. After what had been an eventful preseason, the regular season tipped off on November 22nd with Michigan State playing host to Toledo 
in a 77-33 victory. The Spartans displayed signs of what would become their trademarks throughout the season, rebounding and defense. MSU out-rebounded Toledo 45-20 and held Toledo to only 26% shooting from the field as the Rockets went without a point over the last 7.54 of the contest. The morning after their 23rd consecutive season opening victory, the Spartans boarded a plane for Puerto Rico to participate in the Puerto Rico shootout. Michigan State collected wins over Providence and South Carolina before falling to Texas in the championship game. Michigan State returned to East Lansing just long enough to pack for its next trip to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The odds seemed to be stacked against the Spartans as they were facing a North Carolina team that had not lost to a non-conference opponent at home since 1989 and had not lost a home opener since 1928. From the outset of the game, it was evident that the Spartans were not intimidated by the Tar Heels tradition or their number two ranking. Led by 17 first half points from Morris Peterson, MSU took a 44-36 halftime lead. At one point in the second half, the margin reached as many as 17 points as Peterson established a new career high with 31 points. The nationally televised contest also sent a message to the college basketball world that Michigan State was indeed bigger than just one player. After returning home to capture its fourth consecutive Coca-Cola Spartan Classic, Michigan State had another nationally televised appearance. This one with the Kansas Jayhawks. Making their second straight appearance in the grade eight, the Spartans used a 21 point effort from Charlie Bell to record an impressive 66-54 victory over the second ranked Jayhawks. The Spartans led 39-23 at the half and by as many as 23 points in the second half. During the game, ESPN placed a wireless microphone on the team please. You can't let him go baseline. You can't let him go baseline. We've got to send him back to the middle towards the help. Viewers across the country learned that Cleves was still a big part of the team's success despite wearing street clothes and that no one was happier for his teammates than he was. Four days later, Michigan State ventured on another long road trip, this time to Arizona. Despite trailing by as many as 19 points early, the Spartans pulled even with 821 left in the game when Jason Richardson reverse slammed the missed shot. The Wildcats proved to be too much that Saturday, however. Returning to the Breslin Center at 3 a.m. Sunday morning, the Spartans were at the end of a grueling early schedule that saw the team play nine games in 20 days, logging over 8,500 miles in the process. Maybe this is a good week for a little break. Um, I think our guys are been through a rugged 20 days, and I think we're looking forward to some time off. We're going to try to spend a few days working on Michigan State which is something we haven't had a chance to do for the last 20 days. Uh, I was really spending time on ourselves in practice, which I think is critical, especially early in the year, where you have to get better yourself. The Spartans would split their next four games to finish the pre-Big Ten schedule with a 9-4 record. Up next was the Big Ten opener with Penn State. The game also marked the return of a team please. Cleves did not start the game, but entered the contest at the 15.08 mark of the first half to a standing ovation from the sold-out Breslin Center crowd. <laughs> 29 seconds later, Cleves connected on his first field goal attempt of the season. His first assist came at the 2.58 mark when Charlie Bell connected on a 14-foot jump shot. But perhaps the play that really signified Cleves' return came late in the second half when Morris Peterson and Cleves hooked up for an alley-oop for the first time all season. Cleves would remark afterwards that it felt like old times again. For the game, Cleves finished with eight points and five assists in 21 minutes of work as Michigan State started its journey to a third straight conference championship with a 76-63 win. After an easy road victory at Iowa, Michigan State returned home to host Indiana. A lot was on the line as Tom Izzo was in search of his 100th career victory on the same night that Mateen Cleves was attempting to become the MSU career assist leader. And the Spartans were looking to take an early lead in the conference race. 
Starting his first game of the season, Flea's past Scott Skiles to become the career assist leader just over five minutes into the game when Aloysius Anagagne connected on a short hook shot. In what proved to be the closest game at Breslin all season, the Spartans led 31-28 at the half. Charlie Bell led the Spartans with 15 points at intermission. But Indiana's A.J. Guyton countered with 13 first-half points. Late in the second half, it appeared as if the Michigan State home winning streak may be coming to an end, as Indiana held a 58-51 lead at the 245 mark. MSU would not quit, however, and would tie the game when Morris Peterson connected on the biggest shot of the season to date. Leaves from the right sideline. Fights off Peterson. And Mateen looking to dish it in, got it into Morris Peterson. Peterson jacks up the three. He buries it. it. Tied at 62 with 11 seconds to go. Criticized by Mateen Cleese for not taking a similar shot against Kentucky earlier in the season, Peterson knew this time he was going to hit the big shot. The Spartans outscored the Hoosiers 15-9 in the extra period to give Coach Izzo the 100th victory of his career. As the last seconds ticked away, the Izzo and hoisted signs with 100 printed on them, symbolizing Izzo's accomplishment and bringing a few tears to the coach's eyes. After a nine-day layoff, the Spartans journeyed to Ohio State, only to suffer their first defeat of the conference season. After the game, Coach Izzo challenged his team to play with more toughness. Michigan State responded with two strong defensive efforts against Northwestern in successive games, out-rebounding the Wildcats 45-13 in one contest and holding them to only seven field goals in 39 attempts in the second meeting. The seven field goals were the fewest by an MSU opponent since 1951, while the 29 points marked the lowest total for an opponent since 1948. On Super Bowl Sunday, the Spartans played host to Illinois, easily defeating the Fighting Illini, 91-66, as four Spartans scored in double figures, led by Charlie Bell's 20 points. The team pleads added 13 points and 12 assists, marking his first double-figure assist performance since his return. Next up for the Spartans was a meeting with interstate rival Michigan. An erratic first half performance gave the Spartans a tenuous six point halftime lead. In the second half, MSU would play with better purpose as the team cruised to a 20 point victory. The largest margin of victory ever for Michigan State at Michigan. Morris Peterson collected a new career high with 32 points and added 10 rebounds for a double double. 20 points and all 10 rebounds coming in the second half. Despite the convincing victory, Coach Izzo was looking for more out of his squad. With defending champion Connecticut coming into town, Izzo knew his team would need to play with more focus and intensity. To lend an assist, the team turned to heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali, who was in attendance for the game. In a pregame speech, he challenged the Spartans to play like champions. The speech must have hit a chord with the players as the Spartans jumped on the Huskies early and often, en route to a 46-17 halftime lead. Quickly up the left sideline, Peterson with a lob. Richardson for the slam! From the right baseline, 13A Michigan State. Boy, Jason, good to see him hustling. And a steal, Elamine had it taken away, Charlie Bell. Bell on the break, he's got a two on one, and Peterson on the lob! Wow, and it's 15-8. That encourages a timeout for Calhoun. And this place going crazy. The 85-66 MSU victory marked the 24th consecutive win in the Breslin Center, a school record. The next week saw Michigan State split road games at Purdue and Wisconsin before the much anticipated rematch with the Ohio State Buckeyes. Spartans would turn to the Flintstones for the victory as Charlie Bell, Mateen Cleese, and Morris Peterson combined to outscore the Buckeyes 73-72 en route to an 83-72 MSU win. In a game that saw Mateen Cleese become the career steals leader, the defining moment came when Morris Peterson drove in from midcourt to dunk the ball over Ohio State shot blocker Ken Johnson. Team please dribbles across the line to Peterson coming from the left wing. Jam with a left hand over Ken Jensen. Right and over Johnson. 
Johnson. Johnson was waiting for him, but he took it right to him. I knew he had one left in him. After victories over Wisconsin and Penn State, the Spartans traveled to Bloomington, Indiana, looking to secure first place in the league standing. Trailing 38-33 at the half, the Spartans rallied to take a 69-63 lead with 2.56 remaining. But just as MSU had rallied at home in the earlier meeting, Indiana had one last comeback with A.J. Guyton knocking down a three-pointer to send the game into overtime with 28 seconds left in regulation. A team please knocked down a three-pointer of his own to open the extra period, but the Hoosiers would score the next seven points. Andre Hudson then scored four straight points to tie the game at 79. Indiana would then steal victory when Lynn Washington grabbed A.J. Guyton's air ball off the floor to lay it in just before the buzzer. In the visiting locker room after the game, Michigan State shed a lot of tears. At the same time, many promises were made. The Spartans were not going to accept losing anymore. It just hurt too much. There were still championships to win. Simply put, it was winning time. The next time Michigan State took the floor, it was March. But before the madness of the tournament could commence, the Spartans had a regular season conference championship to win. After easily dismissing Minnesota in a Thursday night game, the Spartans had one day to prepare for the season finale against Michigan. This was hardly your normal regular season game. In fact, it was bigger than most Michigan State-Michigan contests. A win would not only be the perfect send-off for four seniors, but would also give the Spartans a share of their third straight Big Ten championship. Before the game could get started, seniors Steve Cherry, A.J. Granger, Morris Peterson, and Mateen Cleese were recognized as part of the Senior Day festivities. Emotions were high for a class that will be remembered as one of the best in Spartan history. By the time the season was over, the group had compiled an impressive record of 104-32, the most wins amassed by one senior class in Michigan State history. Along the way, they collected three regular season Big Ten championships, two Big Ten tournament championships, three NCAA tournament appearances, two trips to the Final Four, and one national championship. But perhaps more important than any list of accomplishments, was the way the seniors represented themselves, their teammates, and their university. All-Americans Mateen Cleves and Morris Peterson were their teammates' biggest supporters. A.J. Granger was willing to accept whatever role Coach Izzo wanted him to play, and usually did a good job at whatever he was asked to do. And Steve Cherry fought through a series of injuries to become an invaluable practice player. As it turned out, Michigan didn't stand a chance in the season finale. Michigan State was simply not going to lose on this day. Junior Charlie Bell tried to steal the spotlight on senior day, posting a career-high 31 points. But this day belonged to the seniors, and specifically to Mateen Cleaves. Holding a comfortable 51-24 lead at halftime, Coach Izzo challenged Cleaves to do something special in his last game at the Breslin Center. Something like getting 20 assists. Cleaves, who had seven assists at the break, answered the challenge and made sure that he got the ball to his open teammates. With Charlie Bell connected on a three-pointer from the top of the key at the 8.28 mark, Cleves had his 17th assist of the game and became the Big Ten career assist leader. Mike Chappelle three-pointer gave Cleves his 18th assist, the MSU single game record. His 19th assist, the Steve Cherry three-pointer, made Cleves the Big Ten single game assist leader. And A.J. Granger's three-pointer gave Cleves his 20 assists, only too shy of the NCAA record. In the end, the Spartans defeated the Wolverines 114-63, to setting team records for assists, three-point field goals, three-point field goals attempted, points in a Big Ten game, and margin of victory in a Big Ten game. With a third straight Big Ten championship secured, the Spartans celebrated with their fans on the floor. But before the fans could get too caught up in the moment, the team please reminded everyone that this team had bigger goals. They said it couldn't be done. Ah. Hey, so I just want to thank everybody for the support. 
And I have to thank the Izzo for supporting us and being behind us the whole year. I gotta thank all my Flintstones that's been here supporting and supporting us. And I just wanna thank everybody, y'all stay behind us because we will win a national championship. But before Michigan State could make a run at the national championship, it had a little more business to take care of in the conference. The next goal was winning the Big Ten Tournament in Chicago. In the quarterfinals, the Spartans faced Iowa for the first time since the first week of the Big Ten season. But like they were in Iowa City, the Spartans were double-digit winners, this time by a count of 75-65. Up next was a semifinal matchup with Wisconsin. MSU led 34-21 at the half, and by as many as 19 points in the second half, en route to a 55-46 victory. The 2000 Big Ten Tournament Championship game was a rematch of the 1999 championship contest between Michigan State and Illinois. But unlike 1999, when the Fighting Illini were a surprise participant, no one was shocked to see them in the finals this time around. Since their defeat in East Lansing at the end of January, the Illini had won 10 of 11 games. Michigan State, however, was ready for the challenge. A sluggish start saw the Spartans score only eight points in the first eight minutes, 37 seconds. Trailing 16-15 with 8-18 remaining in the half, the Spartans went on a 20-11 run to close the first half and take a 35-27 lead into the half. The momentum carried over to the second half with the lead reaching as many as 20 points at one point. Morris Peterson was named tournament MVP, with Mateen Cleaves earning a spot on the all-tournament team. For the Big Ten Championship and a Big Ten Tournament Championship already secured, MSU could now turn its attention to the ultimate goal, winning the national championship. The Spartans easily defeated Valparaiso in the first round, before using a second-half surge to defeat Utah in the second round. The Spartans then headed to the Midwest Regional at the Palace of Auburn Hills. With 22,000 fans in the arena, most wearing green and white, the Spartans seemed to have a home court advantage. But Sweet 16 opponent Syracuse was not intimidated and held a 34-24 lead at the half. Trailing by as many as 14 points, the Spartans used 60% field goal shooting in the second half to get back into the game. With the game tied at 58, MSU would finish on a 17-0 run. Morris Peterson scored 16 of his 21 points in the second half, while A.J. Granger chipped in 19 points for the game. The stage was now set for a return trip to the Final Four. All the Spartans had to do was get by the Iowa State Cyclones, but it would not be an easy task. With all the upsets taking place in the tournament, they seemed to avoid the Midwest region, meaning that the number one and two seeds were going to battle for the trip to Indianapolis. For the Spartans to win, they would have to stop Iowa State's All-American, Marcus Pfizer. After a hotly contested first half, the Spartans took a three-point advantage into the half. But Iowa State would open the second half on a run and led 48-40 with 11.46 remaining. Spartans cut the lead to one point, but the Cyclones expanded the lead to seven points with under six minutes remaining. It was time for another Spartan run. Triggered by back-to-back -back three pointers by A.J. Granger and Morris Peterson, Michigan State pulled to within three points. At 2.58, a Charlie Bell jumper gave Michigan State a 62-61 lead. On the defensive end of the floor, the Spartans were applying the clamps holding the Cyclones to just one field goal over the last 4.51. Andre Hudson was on his way to a double-double, 17 points, 11 rebounds, while holding Pfizer to 15 points and only four rebounds. With 2.17 remaining and up by one point, Michigan State called timeout, wanting to set up a play to take control of the game. Mateen Cleaves ran a screen and rescreen with A.J. Granger and then hit Morris Peterson who was cutting back door at a perfect lob pass. As Peterson slammed the ball home and swung across the rim, there was little doubt to Spartan fans who was going to win this game. The Spartans secured the victory by connecting on 11 of 12 free throws over the final 107. The Spartans were on their way to Indianapolis, 
joined by the Wisconsin Badgers, Florida Gators, and North Carolina Tar Heels. The Spartans were the only number one seed to make it through the bracket. Many people were picking Michigan State to win it all. The team took it all in stride. The players had dealt with the pressure of expectations all year. And with the experience of last year's Final Four, they were well equipped to handle many of the outside distractions. We're not overwhelmed by it. You know, maybe some teams might get overwhelmed by all the media exposure, but for us, I mean, it just we just try to take it, you know, as it comes. I mean, I'm just we're happy with and trying to enjoy the moment, but we know that there's still a lot of work to be done. I think a lot of guys are physically beat up. I, I think we're mentally there, but uh, I think we're beat up a little bit. But you know, at this time of year, you just have to play through that. I mean. You know, we've gotten down to this point, you know, last year we, we went pretty far the year before that. We understand what it's like to play at this time of year, how physically drained you are, and you just have to fight through it and you know, come together as a team. But Coach Izzo also wanted this year's team to enjoy the Final Four. It paid off as the team was focused on the goal at hand, but not uptight. The Spartans displayed their emotion at Friday's open practice at the RCA Dome, thrilling the fans with a dazzling array of dunks by everyone from Jason Richardson to Mateen Cleaves. Saturday night, it was time to get down to business against Wisconsin. The game was the fourth meeting of the season for the two teams and a rematch of the Big Ten Tournament semifinal. Stingy defenses and poor shooting combined for a 19-17 Spartan advantage at the half. With the outside shots not falling, Michigan State decided to pound the ball inside in the second half, going repeatedly to Morris Peterson in the post, who tallied 16 points and grabbed five rebounds after the half. The plan worked as Michigan State quickly gained a double-figure advantage that would hold through the remainder of the contest, finishing with a 53-41 win. After Florida defeated North Carolina in the second national semifinal game, the stage was set for the national championship game. Despite being the favorite, many people questioned whether the Spartans could handle the Florida press and whether the Spartans possessed a deep enough bench. But the throng of fans in Indianapolis were convinced that this would be a night to remember for Michigan State. From the outset of the championship game, it was evident that Michigan State had all the answers. Against the Florida press that had hounded its other opponents, Michigan State committed only four first-half turnovers. Meanwhile, the team Cleves recorded 13 first-half points as the Spartans took a 43-32 lead into the half. Florida opened the second half with a little run and trailed by only six points just under three minutes into the half. At the 16-18 mark, it appeared as if things were going against the Spartans when Cleves fell to the floor in agony after rolling his right ankle. Spartan fans held their collective breath as Cleves lay on the floor, being examined by the trainer and doctor. As Cleves hobbled back to the locker room, Coach Izzo gathered the team together and told them it was time for somebody to step up. The team had played the first 13 games of the season without Cleves and had put together some impressive victories. Now they were just 16 minutes away from the NCAA championship. Just as other players had stepped up in Cleve's absence earlier in the season, they would do the same in the title game. Coming out of the timeout, Mike Chappelle knocked down his biggest shot of the season, a three-point field goal from the top of the key, giving MSU a nine-point cushion. Florida would cut the lead to six points again but at 12-13, A.J. Granger connected from three-point range, giving MSU a 58-49 lead. With Mateen Cleves now on the sideline ready to check in, the Florida Gators had seen their chance to get back in the game come and go. Florida would not get closer than eight points for the remainder of the game, 
as the Spartans would soon build a double-digit lead, reaching as many as 19 points. As the final seconds ticked off the clock in the RCA Dome, the scoreboard read Michigan State 89, Florida 76. The journey that had begun one year earlier was now complete. The Spartans had faced their share of adversity and then some, but nothing could put an end to their dreams. They had experienced the pain of losing games like the one at Indiana, but had turned that pain into motivation for their championship run. Finishing the season with an 11 game winning streak, the Spartans would not accept losing as a possibility. I got, I got a little gator for dinner. Oh yeah, oh, we ate gators for dinner. A little gator for dinner. Hey man, tonight, y'all ain't gonna make this a night to remember. I'll get ready. Uh, tonight. Hey, right. All right. <laughs> what's up, what's up? They said we couldn't do it, but we right here. It's <laughs> National <laughs> Champions. That's all I gotta say. That could be done. National they said it could be done. We did it. The entire state of Michigan embraced the national champions as they returned to the steps of the state capitol. With thousands of fans looking on, the Spartans put the final touches on their season of destiny. Coach Izzo, let me present to you one more piece of hardware to go with all the impressive accomplishments of this team at every level. They are the best, and this tribute recognizes this Michigan State Spartan championship team and proclaims that today is Michigan State Spartan Day. This coming year will be the Michigan State Year of the Spartan. I think now it's time for Duke and Kentucky and the other universities to try to match Michigan State University. I am confident and we have a great coach. We'll have a great program at this university for many more years to come. To be able to see them talking about Michigan State University was maybe the greatest thrill I've had, other than my daughter being born, the greatest thrill I've had. And I hope all of you shared in it, and I hope we have the greatest parade we could ever have today to remember it. Thank you.